I think I backed into this project. Uh, I have never had a great desire to make an individual statement, and I certainly didn't want any more attention. I, uh, I satisfy so much of my musical uh, self in context of Rush, so I don't have any great frustrations from that point of view. But once in a while you'd wonder, what, you know, what's it like out there? <laughs> you know, what's it like to work with other people? Well, look, we'll set up your rig. My friend, Ben Mink, uh, you know, we've been friends for a long time, yeah. and we had a, a very good, uh, close, and funny relationship. And about once a year, we would say to each other, well, I wonder what it would be like to work together, you know, because he's an accomplished musician, I'm an accomplished musician, but we come at music from very different backgrounds. He was over at my house, and um, I just took him into my little project studio and, and wanted to show him a bass I'd picked up, which was just one of those acoustic, you know, basses they make now. And he picked it up, and I picked up an acoustic guitar, and we were really surprised to hear, we just started noodling around for five minutes. We actually had never done that. And we looked at each other and went, ah, you play like me. And it was like, no, you play like me. Uh, and it kind of freaked us out that our feel was so close. It sounded like more than two people, and it sounded very, very natural. And anyway, we wrote a song, of course. It wasn't terrible, and we had a great time doing it. So that's, as they say, that's when the trouble began. Home on the Strange uh, features drumming talents of Jeremy Taggart, who uh, is a great Canadian drummer. It was the last song we wrote on the record. It came at the very end, and we've been working really hard on all these other songs, slaving over details, and we wanted to do something where we didn't slave at all over any details. So it was pretty well recorded live, Jeremy and I, bass and, and drums. And then we, you know, Ben threw some guitars on, and, and, uh, and that was it. That's it. I think a real fun, spontaneous feel. When somebody thinks of, of me doing a solo record, they think of, you know, fast bass licks. And <laughs> I didn't really want to do that. It wasn't interesting to me melodically, although there are a couple of moments for that stuff. Along the way, I realized that I was writing a lot of these songs on bass, and I was playing a lot of bass chords. And then I, I got into this multi-tracking bass idea. So a lot of the tracks on the record do have, you know, three or sometimes four tracks of bass doing very different things that are not immediately recognizable as bass. So I've got a rhythm guitar playing, and in, like in the title track, My Favorite Headache, for example, one of the most aggressive guitar sounds on the record is not a guitar, it's a bass playing these really outrageous chords. It's just, you know, it's just a thrill for me always when you get in the, in the realm of great players just to push record and sit back and just, you know, watch Getty Lee be Getty Lee, you know, it's like, there's nobody like him, like, the way he attacks his bass is, it's just, uh, it's a whole other thing. There's a lot of uh, multiple bass overdubs in uh, layers of um, what we call them zoomers, or I guess that's a Getty term, the zoomers, little bass moments and fills that come in and come out. So it's, um, yeah, it's, there's no shortage of uh, great bass moments on this record. So I've worked with loads of bass players, but he's got probably the most unorthodox style. He's really invented his own technique. Ben still laughs when he sees me come up with this weird rhythmic bass chordal thing that almost is rooted in flamenco guitar. <laughs> you know, so he refers to my playing as flamenco bass. But, uh... One man standing on the plains of Abraham watching a damaged sunrise. My favorite headache. There's so much in that little phrase. It actually came out of a conversation I had with my father, who was making a comment about my mother. He was telling Ben a story, and he said, so right away, 
your mother gets the favorite headache. Uh, and we just laughed and we thought, wow. And we just started thinking about that whole idea of, uh, you know, this thing that you have or you love to do or you need to do that you love but it pains you at the same time, you know, that, that yin and yang that's all thrown into that phrase. Yeah, spoke volumes to me. Everybody has those moments when uh, you know, you're down about your life or your job or whatever and you just hide away from the world and you just ponder and luxuriate in your being depressed. How was the take? Was it great? I could try it with a Scottish accent. Is that better? I don't think there are a lot of records being made like this anymore where we just everything but the kitchen sink was allowable. Uh, we both like attention to detail, we both like to play around filling the gaps and, uh, and, and even though we have an appreciation for simplistic production, we tended not to go down that road. We like to uh, layer the thing with more melodies. Going to work with Ben, myself, and David Leonard was very casual, you know, just the three of us sitting around the control room, uh, figuring out how to make the music better. With Ben and Getty is a great collaborative effort. I think there's a great, a great balance with the three of us because there's never a there's never a tie that you can't break with the three people. Time to time, we kept saying, you know, we should get somebody in to do this, somebody to do that. The way this project came together, there seemed to be so much of it that we could do ourselves. It, it started to feel gratuitous to go outside that. But it had nothing to do with ego. It's not like we want to pound our chest and say, look, we can do it all. We, we love working with other musicians. It really what, is what gives music the meaning it, it really should have. Aside from wanting to work with Matt Cameron, who, uh, you know, it was a wonderful addition and a, I think a profound addition to the rhythm core of, of the record. I just try to go into each recording project with an open, uh, open mind and just try to make sure that the people who are writing the music and recording it are, are happy with my performance. He was just getting ready for a Pearl Jam tour, so we had to be considerate of his time. And we only had a, like a three-week window. And a lot of my friends are the same age and kind of grew up listening to Rush. and. They thought it was very, very cool. And they're very excited to hear the record. Getty has one of the most unique voices on, on Earth. You can hear one moment of it flipping a radio station, and you know that's Rush. These songs are, are you know, because they're Getty's lyrics, are coming from him, and that's his voice. Quite simply, that's his voice. And we've tried different ways to um, to bring new qualities out, and I think we have. I think his voice sounds just great on this record. It's funny, a couple of people have made comments ab about how different the words sound in context with my voice. And I, I think it's gotta be attributed to the fact that I am spacing things rhythmically because of what I want to sing, not because I have to shape a kind of a script to the music I've written. You know, I can take such license, I can change it, I can do whatever I want with it without having to accommodate uh, another writer. Working with someone like Neil, who takes largely responsibility for the lyrics, you get lazy in that area, you don't explore that area. Uh, so for me, um, the hardest part was starting to write lyrics. And then it became the most fun for me. Of, of anything to do with this project was writing my own lyrics, shaping them 
to the melodies that I wanted to express. And listening back to the result of that, and I thought, wow, this, is, this was like doing my own personal jigsaw puzzle, and it was really a lot of fun. I mean, I learned a lot making this record, and the more I got into making the record, the more I realized how beneficial it is for me to do this. I learned a lot about myself as a writer, and I was able to express myself as a lyricist for the first time in a long time, and develop that past the point of being embarrassed about it. Uh, and that opened up a whole other realm of creative expression for me that I really can't underestimate. How about Macedonian? I do a good Macedonian.